Welcome! It's a great day to be a miner. In today's video, we've got a special new item that we're going to be setting up to better overclock our Ice River Caso, Caso Ultras, Caso Pros, Mega Deluxe Editions. But before we do that, let's spin that intro. Today we have an exciting new item and uh, we're going to have to do a little build to make this thing work, but it's really going to be a nifty item. So what do I have here? What's in the box? Oh, what's this the is box? a 150 amp high precision watt meter and power analyzer. So you're asking what the heck is that altered? I hear you barking big dog. Let's open it up and take a look. So inside of here. It's just a box with a nice little meter here and it's an inline meter so basically we're going to feed the power through this guy and into whatever we want to measure and it comes with just some little tend off ends so obviously this isn't going to work as is so we want to set this thing up with a barrel plug so that we could better monitor our amperage and our wattage used in our KSOs, our KSO Ultra and our KSO Pros and KSO Pro Special Edition and future KSO Super Ultra Mega Rare Deluxe Edition coming out in 2025. Yeah, we're going to keep your eyes peeled for that one. So we picked up a nice 5.5 millimeter barrel plug and I actually picked this one up because we need a male and a female end but it has an inline fuse so I'll chop that off and I'll probably just keep the fuse as an extra um, for some other project because I'm not going to use that inline fuse but I am going to take both of these ends off we're going to put it on this guy and then what we'll do is so our wall power instead of going directly into our KSO Ultra we'll plug it into the input side then from the output side we'll plug into the KSL Ultra the power will flow through this guy and then it'll have a nice little blue um, LED display to tell us precisely how much amperage and how much wattage is being used being ran into the device so that will help us better understand while we're doing our overclocking and whatnot so this is going to be a nifty little device and a fun little project so first and foremost we have to decide do we want to just cut these off we could just cut the the ends off and we could um, just go ahead and splice them together and put nice little connectors on each end or we could even open this guy up and see how these wires are soldered in and maybe we run these wires directly in and solder them so that there's not a connector um, i think that's what we're going to do is we're going to open this guy up first and uh, before we do that I'll make sure let's put a, po a picture of this thing up on the screen so you can see exactly what it looks like and what it looks like while it's hooked up um, but yeah let's open this guy up see what it looks like inside see how these wires are hooked in if they're just soldered in and it's an easy solder we'll probably just cut these ends run it into the plastic housing and solder it directly into the board if it looks like a pain or there you maybe use a high temp solder then we'll just simply uh, use some connectors and crimp these ends on like so so let's take let's go ahead and open that up let's go okay first before we open this up i want to give a disclaimer that if you do this setup and you melt your fingers or you toast your your uh your eyebrows off that's on you but i digress if you do this safely you do it right you should be fine so i've taken out the four screws one on each corner of this guy and we're going to open it up let's see what it looks like inside okay so we've got a little board on top of a bigger board um, we've got the two red right here and underneath of the board we have the two black and they're soldered directly in i wonder if this mini board will pop up out if it doesn't pop up out it will be really hard to get to those wires And it doesn't so let me see so there is a long line of pinouts right here and these are all soldered so the the mini top board is soldered down to the the larger bottom board with the display with this pin out um, the wires run under the board hopefully you can see that right underneath of the board for the black for the the ground the negatives so to get under there to resolder 
would be kind of a pain. Um, so what we're going to do is I think we're going to leave it as is and we're just going to use some nice connectors and we'll cut and splice the wire. So let's put this back on and then we'll go get some connectors, proper connectors and get our good wire crimpers and our uh, strippers, our wire strippers so that we can put nice professional ends on this thing and not have to worry about any kind of electrocution. So let's go do it. All right, so we got us some supplies. However, it, this is 12 gauge wire. This is 12 gauge wire. So you should use, if you're using connectors, the yellow so that it actually fits in there perfectly and you can crimp it properly. Um, however, I could only find two. So we're gonna do the positive wires, both with the yellow 12 gauge, and then we're gonna jam in the uh, black and we're gonna make them fit into the blue uh, 14 gauge connector don't do what Donnie don't does. That's not the proper way to do it. And I'm just doing it as a temporary and then I'll replace them once I get some uh, the yellow connectors. So then we're going to um, use our nice crimpers here. We'll crimp that. We've got these super handy uh, wire strippers. These things are amazing. I'll make sure to put a link down in the description and show you how awesome these things are. Since I've got these men like wire stripping, it's it. this is the way to go. So. Let's go ahead and cut us off some ends. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna need some barrel ends. So we're gonna just chop this back about that far on each wire. There's the black, there's the red. Whoop. And there goes our connector. And then same thing on this side. And I'm not leaving a ton of wire because more wire means that the more wire that you use, the more resistance and the more power you actually use. So you don't want to have just random lots of extra wire. All right, so let's show you how the wire stripper works. On the side here, it has a 16, 14, 12, 10 um, circles and you just put it the wire through, it grabs it, it pulls it and it strips it all in one fell swoop. So I'm gonna put this into the 12 and I'm only gonna leave a little bit exposed like so. And then when I squeeze it, it's gonna grab, pop, and it just stripped that right off there. That is how it goes, man. That is the way to live. This is living. The old method, spinning around and around and trying to get it to come off there and sometimes ripping the wire. That's, that's for the cavemen, man. This is the way to do it. And there's the black one and there's the red and then i give it a little twist to make sure the wire is nice and neat there's one end and now we'll do the other end same thing put it in there put it into the 12 slot just give enough exposed and pop off the casing there's the red And here is the black. Again, I'll put links in the description for both of these tools. Both of these have been amazing for me and I'm very glad that I have went out and bought these quite a while back because they do make life way easier. So since I only have two yellows and I should put a yellow on each, I'm gonna make sure that my red wire is used for the yellow. Now these are these wire fly crimpers. So they lock into place, they're ratcheting so I'll squeeze to let them out like so. And then they're color coded on the side. I don't know if it'll pick up the color coding up here. So I'm gonna put them into the yellow slot for the crimper. And then I'm gonna go clear up to the end. And then I'm just gonna simply squeeze down until it gets a really tight, secure crimp. And then two hand and it kind of ratches it down and then let off. I didn't have it crimped far enough and they will get kind of stuck in the jaw sometimes but there you go that's how the end is and look how tight that thing is that's how it should be so that's one end of it and then if I want I got to make sure I get the right ends here so the one says load and one says source so the source is where the power is coming from and the load is where it's going to so it should be the power coming from the wall is your source. And then I gotta make sure that I've got it right though. I'm pretty sure it goes this way, but let me verify the wiring. It should go flow through and back into the ultra. Let's go ahead and put all of our ends on 
and then we'll make sure that we have the sides on the right side and we'll put those on. Let's go ahead and time warp and do it. Okay, so I've got my ends crimped on there. And yeah, I was right that your source is your power source where it's coming in. So then we're taking and using the female end for the barrel connector here. And then we'll, so the power will come from the wall. It'll go into this female end. It'll go into our source. It'll come back out to our load, which is our item. And then we'll connect it like that. So there is our plugs. We'll go ahead and start hooking these up. The harder will be these, um, trying to get these into the smaller connectors because that's not really what it's made for. I'm gonna trim it back, get rid of the tend end. And that sucker went flying. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I'm trimming back these ends and I'm going, they're 12 gauge as well. So I'm gonna put them in the 12 G and then I'm gonna strip them back. That wants to not strip that wire off there. There we go. Because that 10 in I didn't get completely. But there we go. I got that. Now let's do the next one. That one came right off. Let's trim just a little bit more off of this one. And then we'll twist our wire up. That should allow it to fit in the one that it shouldn't be in anyway. Just do some hard twisting here. That's it's going to be a tight one. Might have to trim back some of this wire too. So let's go ahead and do that. And you won't have to do all that if you actually use the right yellow connectors like this one. It'll just thread in and then we'll crimp it. I guess I can go ahead and do it first just to show. And then we're just going to crimp tight until it clicks. And then it ratchets and let go and then it just pops out so there's how those wire fly um, crimpers work they're amazing tools so there's our red now i just need to hook up my blue and then hook up the other side and then we'll be about ready for testing so let's go ahead and time warp and get that done go okay so there is our finished product again i had to strip these back don't use the blue connectors this is 12 gauge wire you should be using the yellow if you're going to make it exactly like this and you could even do some um, electrical tape around these but these are super secure connections and i'm not afraid of those arcing or touching anything so yeah this is ready to go and then i think we just need to go and actually plug it in and test it out and see if it's gonna work let's go all right, so here we have at the top shelf, we have two KSO Pros overclocks. We've got a Ultra not overclocked. Then we have on the bottom left or middle left, we have three KSO Pro Special Edition, all overclocked. And then below that, we have three of the Ultras not overclocked. So let's take our handy dandy meter here that we just made, and we're going to plug it in to one of our devices, and we're gonna see how much power. And they are already monitored at the wall, so we'll use, compare it with the um, Wi-Fi outlet, and let's, uh, let's do it. All right, go ahead and queue up the three weeks later. Three weeks later. Yeah, yeah, so what happened was we went ahead and had this thing set up. It's only been actually a few days. But we had this thing all set up, had our ends on, crimped on all nicely, and they were really well done and all professional looking. And then uh, realized that I got the wrong barrel jack. This is the 5.5 millimeter, as the Ice River K, uh, KSOs actually do take a 5.5 millimeter barrel, but the inside is a 2.1, and the KSOs need a 2.5, 5.5 by 2.5. So yeah, I messed up. It wouldn't plug in, couldn't test it. Now I went and got some real nice new barrel connectors. The male ends are these ni really nice metal ones and these are very similar to what the veteran miner uses on his ca cables, his connectors. Shout out to the veteran miner. If you haven't checked out those cables, they are brilliant. Go check them out. You can hook up your server power supply to your KSOs. So yeah, these are the kind of barrel jacks he uses. That's the male end. And then for the female end, I bought these pigtails here and it has a nice little jacket around the end. I'll put pictures, uh, screenshots of all of these up on the screen and of course links down in the description. And then uh, went ahead and spliced the wires, soldered them in. Uh, these are actually connectors, but when I crimped them really hard, it had some metal exposed. So I went ahead and just wrapped them in electrical tape to be cautious. This side did not expose the metal. 
So there is my female end for my uh, source. And then for my load, which will go out to the device, is the male end. So yeah, there, it's all set up. Now let's go test it out and see if it actually works. Fingers crossed, let's go. All right, take two, there it is. There is our male end, there's our meter, and then here is our female end right there. Hopefully that'll focus in, there we go. And now we're just gonna plug it into one of our ice rivers and let's see it work. Let's go. All right, so right off the bat, we've plugged the power source in and it is showing instantly, it's showing how many volts we're at 19.9 pulling with no watts because we haven't actually plugged in the other end. So the other only issue with this is the direction I have it in. I'm gonna have to almost turn it upside down to plug it in. I should have ran it over this way. Let's see if we can reroute this a little bit. Uh, Not really because of my cable management, but let's just plug it in and see what we get. Make sure we're working here. All right, we are in and functioning. So the device is on, it's showing it's hard to see, but it says on this side, zero amps. This is 19.1 volts, zero watts. Oh, then that's starting to read. Let's see if this thing's going to fire up here. Our fan is definitely spinning on the other side. There's the amperage. It's starting to go up, starting to read. It's taking a little bit. Let's see if we can get a closer look here. It's gonna be hard with this camera. Let me switch the modes on the camera. Okay, so it is firing up. This is an overclock Caspa Caso, a special edition, the Cas edition. And it's showing, hopefully that can read, I can't tell. It's reading 19.55 volts, 85 watts, 4.35 amps. So we're gonna let this fire for a little while and then we're going to actually compare the wattage going into it with the wattage at the wall since we have power uh, Wi-Fi outlets just to see how close they actually line up to one another. All right, so there it is, it's running. Let's see if we can see it better if up close. If it'll focus, there we go. 95.3 watts, 4.89 amps. This is running on 120 volt, or 120 volt and it is uh, running 95 watts. It is overclocked. And it's probably doing about 280 giga hash. Now let's check it versus what the wall shows. So the, these are hooked into these triple Wi-Fi outlets so that I can turn each KSO off separately, but all the power is monitored together. So I'm gonna turn off the other two beside it so that only the one is actually drawing any electric. Um, so we'll use our Smart Life app. We're gonna go to our KSO Hub 2. I've got a hub for each three. So right there, if you can see it focus. So this red is a solid always on outlet. The other three are the three KSO Pro Special Edition. And I'm gonna turn off the first one. That's the wrong one. This one's actually the first one. So let's turn off the other two. Now they're all off. And if I go to energy monitoring, the power usage in watts should drop down. So while we're waiting on that, let's just fire back up just the one that we're monitoring. And when it turns on, it says watt meter up there. Here's what it freshly looks like. And it'll take it a minute to start spooling up. Meanwhile, our watt or our meter is now showing six watts at the wall. I feel like this doesn't read until it gets up to a certain wattage 
and it doesn't feel like when it's completely at idle that it's actually going to read. So there's that. Okay, I'm showing six. I'm showing six watts on the device. Twelve at the wall. There's my wall. Twelve watts. Five point seven on the device. And it's starting to spool up now. 85 watts. Okay, so we're finally all spooled up, and here is what's crazy interesting. So this is showing 95 watts. 95 watts. And that, in my opinion, is completely, perfectly accurate. 95 watts, that's how much the device is using after overclocking. Now, at the wall, I'm using a very gross 130. 30 watts at the wall for that one device now there's a couple things that equates for that of course the extra wire why as wire flows through it's going to take extra but the power supply i have a feeling is criminally inefficient this generic laptop brick that i'm using that gets super hot is very inefficient that's what's driving up the wattage but either way there is our finished device. It's working. It's a pretty thing. We can use it to, uh, to verify our, uh, while we're overclocking to see how much power the devices are actually using. We can easily unplug it from each side and then move it. So we've got our female end hiding back there and our male end plugged into there. And our power supply just goes right into the female. It runs through the meter and into the device, and it gives us a super accurate reading. It gives us the voltage and the uh, amperage and the actual watts being used. So that's awesome. That is awesome. And I'll be able to use that. I've got these three. I've got those three. And I've got these three. So I've got nine different KSOs, uh, three different variations, Pros, Pro Special Edition, and Ultra is still all running. So yeah, let's go and talk about this thing and cut out of here, peace. Well, there you have it. We got it all built up. It's working. It's pretty sweet. It really is nice. I wish uh, I would have actually used the right connectors to start with, but hey, lesson learned on our next one. We'll have a really good go around. I think I'll make a second one. I'll make sure to list all the supplies that I used down in the description. Um, yeah, it's working and a couple of takeaways. One, this is a really nifty idea and a good way to actually use your overclocking and to get real power readings. Um, the Wi-Fi outlet apparently is letting me know that uh, my laptop power supply is terribly inefficient. Either that or just the outlet itself is not super efficient. So yeah, that's a good idea. I'll put the power meter, an actual watt meter, on the wall and see what it's actually taking. We're gonna do that real quick. All right, so we went and put a meter at the wall and then we tested it versus the meter actually at the device. And you're talking almost 20 watts different by the time it travels through the, the plug, or 20, 25 watts. And most of that is due to the inefficiencies in the laptop brick itself. We're not talking a platinum power supply with premium components. We're talking some cheap Chinese knockoff uh, just to get enough power in there that heats up like crazy. So there is your inefficiency. There is a big difference. And then it's actually 10 watts more at the Wi-Fi plug. So just an interesting thing to go through. Quick, but very, very important update that I wanna post here before we actually put this video live. I have recently reached out to my man, the veteran miner, and he is going to start producing these types of meters along with some other additional goodies. And I gotta tell you, if I knew he was gonna able to make these or he would make these, I might've just had him make them because Man, I had $62 in my build, not counting the additional uh, tax on top of that. But then again, take that with a grain of salt because that's 61 or 61.95 minus the um, errant plug fuses that I already bought. So that was minus another $12. So really it was about 49.95. And then of course that gives me all of these extra parts. So did I pay $50 for it? Eh, maybe, maybe not. 
But uh, yeah, the veteran miner is going to start making these meters. He's going to actually put different types of ends, not just for the KSO Ultra, but he is going to put some eight pins and some six pins, and he's going to make these ASIC friendly for many other things. And of course, he's going to use his beautiful wrapped heavy duty gauged cables and make them so, so much better than this noob can do. So I just want to point that out there. If you are not the kind that want to waste two hours and you don't want to actually buy all these extra pieces and have these extra things laying around and you just want to have the device well stay tuned i'll make sure to keep it posted whenever he does start bringing those out so yeah let's go ahead back to the future but yeah there it is we got it all set up again we'll leave all the links for the pieces down in the, the description in case you want to build one of these reach out to me let me know if you have any questions or concerns make sure to comment down below if you like the video you know what to do smash that like button and subscribe for future content thanks for coming along and enjoy the ride Pssh.